In my second last video, we took a look at the game Space Corp, and I was told that I was saying it wrong, I was saying Space Core, so Space Corp it is. And in that video, I mentioned an older game called Triplanetary, and that's the game we're going to take a look at today. Now, Triplanetary is a very unusual game. It's got very basic components, and uh, to tell you the truth, it's going to be very difficult to do a video on it. It was designed in 1973, and who was the author of this one? The author was Mark Miller, was the designer, and it was published by um, GDW. Now, the rules in this edition say copyright 1973, but the map says uh, 1975. Now, I don't have the original packaging for it, but a friend of mine, seeing the video, gave me his copy. And that's the copy we're reviewing today. Now, the game came in a long, long tube, not in a conventional box. And so it was folded like so. It came in a tube. The reason it was in a tube is because you actually get a plastic with it, a clear plastic, which is almost um, an essential component for playing the game. And uh, we'll take a look at the board, the pieces, and I'll tell you a little bit about this very unusual space game. Very briefly, these are the components that come with the game. You get the rules booklet here, you get the map that we've just seen, and you get that plastic overlay, and you get a grease pencil, more on that later, and of course you get the counters. I'm amazed at the prices too. Complete game, $6.80 back in 1973. Anyway, let's take a look at the components closer, and uh, tell you what the game's all about. Now, the map is pretty basic. It's trying to show uh, the solar system out to Jupiter. We have the Sun here, Mercury. There's Earth with the Moon. Over here you've got Venus, out to Mars. The asteroid belt is shown here, and out to Jupiter in its moons. Uh, of course it's not to scale. Uh, that's always a problem with doing any game within the solar system. As we know, the distances from Earth to Jupiter are much greater than, say, from uh, Mars to Jupiter. So this is a, um, well, a strange scale, to say the least. But how does the game work? Okay, here are some examples of counters. And they all have exotic uh, class names. For example, you get transports, packets, tankers, liners, corvettes, corsairs, frigates, dreadnoughts, a ship called the Torch, and uh, orbital bases. Now the numbers are fairly basic on them. The number to the left is the combat value. There is forms of combat in this game. And the second digit is the um, fuel consumption. And this Torch one here is 8 dash infinity, which means it doesn't have to be fueled. So that would be a very futuristic technology indeed. And this would be uh, like a star base. Now, one thing I like about the game is the game is based in, let's say, oh, maybe 2061, 40, 50 years from now, maybe later. We haven't approached even close to what this uh, era depicts. But it obeys the laws of Newtonian physics. So the ships in this game do not travel faster than the speed of light, nor anywhere uh, approaching it and you have to obey the basic laws of acceleration and deceleration. I'll show you how the game works and what this mysterious grease pencil is for. Now I'm going to try to manipulate the camera and show you some typical moves. So this video will be edited at different times as I take the grease pencil and plot the course, things like that. But most games begin with our scenarios. I should point out too that there's no one campaign game in this. The game consists of a series of scenarios. And you can make your own too. That's one nice thing about it. Let's show you how a space movement works in this fascinating little game. There we've got the Earth, of course, and the Moon. Now, on turn one, when you blast off from the planet, you enter the gravity well of the Earth. Let's say, for example, the ship blasts off and enters uh, the gravity well of Earth. That consumes one fuel. So we'll call that turn one. 
Now on turn two, the ship will be forced to burn up at least one other fuel to enter orbit. And when you enter orbit, you can continue circling the planet. Now in most games, turn two, you'll spend the one to um, maintain orbit. And on turn three, you'll blast off. So on turn three, the turn I'm going to show you, I'll demonstrate what you do. And in the example, I'll, um, let's say, burn four fuels to accelerate. Let's see how that works. Now on this uh, third turn, you take your grease pencil and draw a zero on the hex you're in and draw four spaces ahead if you want it to go four. Draw a line like that, put a little arrow head on it, and you put turn three like that. So you're writing physically on the board. And in the movement phase, of course, you move the vessel one, two, three, four. Now, the nice thing about this game is that it does obey the laws of physics and the way spacecraft really works. Spacecraft in this period and in our technology, they're not airplanes. They're not like Star Wars and all these other uh, futuristic space movies where they just fly around space uh, like airplanes. It does obey just basic physics. So on the next turn, which would be turn four, you're automatically going to go four more spaces. So let's plot that. And after plotting your move, the vessel would move four straight ahead. So that's how movement works. Now I'm going to back up a little bit. As you can see, as you play, you'll have a complete record of your move from the Earth to your destination. Now in this example, let's say I'm going to be flying to Mars. Well, I would have picked a better course than that. I'm actually on a better course to Jupiter. So let's do some plotting. See if I'd gone to Jupiter. I'll do so. Okay, from far away, there's a typical move seven turns into the game. Turn three, turn four, turn five, turn six, seven. Now we're approaching Jupiter, so we better think about decelerating. Let me uh, figure out a move here, and I'll show you how that works. But basically, you still plot your move, and you're allowed to change the direction of the move by one hex by burning fuel. But I'll give you an example of that in a moment. Let me plot the move and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, in this example, if I continue not changing the course or burning fuel, I should have ended up at this hex here. But because I've burnt another fuel, I'm going to choose this hex here. I'm now approaching Jupiter, but I'm still going quite rapidly. So on turn uh, 9, I'll have to burn a lot more fuel to enter the gravity well of Jupiter. I'll show you what a typical move like that costs. Now shown here is the projected movement. If I did not burn any more fuel, I'd end up here, overshooting Jupiter and still going at quite high speed. So I choose to go back here. So there you're going to burn at least three fuels from your total. And of course you've got to keep on a piece of paper your running total because these ships got 20 fuels only. And after that, you'd move here. Then the next turn, you could slow down and then enter the gravity well of Jupiter, which is really turn 10. Now I'm not doing the most efficient course here, just trying to show you some of the things you can do in the game, how the general movement works. Now where does the skill come in? Well the skill comes in is where um, each player plans his move and uses his fuel more efficiently and each of the scenarios um, are quite different than each other. For example there's one kind of cute little scenario it's called the Grand Tour where all the players, and you can play this multiplayer, start off here on Earth and there's a big contest to visit all the planets orbit once and then return to Earth and the one who's done his move most efficiently will um, win the game. Now the grease pencil idea is kind of neat because as you can see you can just, uh, I'll just hold the camera here and demonstrate at the same time, you can just erase your course 
and then your board is as good as new. So that's the reason for the grease pencil. Lo and behold, once all the courses are done, your uh, map is back to normal. Okay, the combat, if it does occur, and that's scenario dependent, is very, very basic. You more or less, it's an odds column. So if this ship wants combat of four, attack this ship combat of two, you go to your little combat damage table, guns. So two to one, roll your dice, and away you go. Combat is very simple. So it's a simple game and an elegant little game. Let me just describe the scenarios because I think that's where the game kind of shines. Okay, there are seven scenarios in the game, and the game is so wide open you can actually make your own. So if there's a science fiction book you kind of favor that has some neat space scenarios, you can always use these components to um, simulate that. The uh, learning scenario, the first one is the Grand Tour, the one I told you about where you uh, try to do this uh, fly by all the planets and get back to Earth. Then there's this little two-player scenario called Escape, which is kind of kind of nifty. These pilgrims are trying to escape the Earth, and these the um, first citizen and his famous thought police are trying to track them down. So you're trying to escape from Earth and leave the solar system, and they're trying to track you down. And there's some hidden movement aspects to that scenario. Then there's one called Lateral 7. Uh, it's a, a liner carrying industrial magnates to an interplanetary mining conference it is outbound from Venus and they're ambushed by pirates. That's kind of a neat little scenario. I have not played all these so I can't comment on them all. I'm just mentioning to them uh, to you so you have an idea what the game is about. And there's of course an interplanetary war. Two planets are at war each with each other. And they, have, they have whole fleets. Alien invasion. Well, Okay, aliens come down and sweep down on Earth, and you try and stop them. Hyperspace shuttles is another um, variant on an alien invasion scenario. And piracy, well, the equivalent, equivalent of uh, piracy in the Caribbean, I guess. If we ever make it that far, mining the solar system, I'm sure there'll be piracy. And, of course, the designer's notes. So we're talking about a very simple game. It's not that complicated. Uh, there are other little things I didn't describe, like mines. Um, but overall, I mean, for its time, a heck of a good game. It was probably my first introduction to space games, because I think Star Force, I don't know what year that came out by SPI, but I purchased that one. But um, this one was kind of cute. I don't think I'll be playing this very much. I think it's a good learning a game for uh, for kids actually to show them just basic concepts about space and how real spaceships work. So um, that's all I really have to say about Triplanetary. Um, like I said, I don't I don't see me playing it anytime soon. But uh, thank you, Harry, for lending me the game, and uh, thank you for watching.